You were only, what, 12 years old? I was when, only when 12. You had a really ghastly experience. Well, it was ghastly. Like I say, I know people who've heard a lot worse, but it, it was confusing. Because there I was, I was 12, I was obviously just coming into puberty, and um, there's a horrible picture of me, age about 13 <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, uh, there was a man on the street, you know, sort of classic boogeyman Were you sort walking of story. home or something? I was walking home from school, and I'd, my friend's nan had come to pick her up from school, and had given her a packet of Smarties. And I remember we had to walk up this very steep hill in Edinburgh, it's called Orchard Bray. And um, Ali was stuffing her face with Smarties and she didn't offer me one. And her nanny never said, are you not going to share your sweets? Be a nice girl and share with Sarah, you know. And um, I was getting more and more sort of uh, obsessed with the fact that I, I wasn't being offered a Smartie. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the sort of stupid childish yeah, yeah. mentality that then just to put it in the context of how young you are, you know. So I'd saved my milk money, 2p, mm -hmm. um, and I'd saved it to get sweeties on the way home. So I took a bit of a detour to the sweetie shop when you still had penny trays and hate me trays and quarter penny trays, I think, actually, in my day. And um, I was then walking home from the sweet shop, and I was obviously on a sugar high and feeling quite pleased with myself. I finally got my sweeties. And um, this guy just sort of involved me in conversation uh, wrote me into a whole yarn about how he was on the run and there were, you know, see those people who are looking at us, they're trying to get me, so I can't go that way, I've got to go this way, do you know the yeah. shortcut, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It, I was probably in his company for about 35 minutes and oh, kept wow. saying, I should, I should, yeah, because he kept drawing me in oh. and in and in. And I, I kept going, I think I should go home now, you know. And he's going, oh, just before you do, you know, do you think you, I, I remember the directions you gave me, but do you think you could just show me the first step of the way and all that. Anyway, mm. you know, he exposed himself to me and I tried to run away and I had my 70s platforms on and it was up a hill and I you know, couldn't run fast enough. And he sort of grabbed me between my legs and lifted me up and started oh. trying to carry me away. Oh, how petrifying. But I've got oh. a great scream. And um, he just dropped me on the ground and ran away. But I got home and my mum could tell something had happened and she sort of drew it out of me. And she took it very, very seriously, and she said, you know, this is wrong, and you should have told me, and I'm calling the police. Did you and... not tell, because even at that age you felt, did you almost feel like you'd done something yes. wrong? It was that shame it's thing. It's classic, it? the classic, shame, yeah. the shame and the guilt. But I years, have gone years off, later, I yeah. I'm, because I, I'm moving you on a bit, because we haven't got too much time here. No. Uh, years and years later, it happened again. But that was somebody that you already knew. No, six months later. Six months Yeah, late. so I was still 12. This is what was confusing. I was, the police were called yes. the first time and it was taken yeah. deeply seriously. And then when uh, six months later and I was still 12, we had a family friend staying who basically tried to seduce me and get me to go into my mum's bedroom with him. And so once I'd finally shaken him off, my mum got back from work and I told her. Yeah. She... The, thinking I was going to have the same response, she then said, oh, well, that's just what he's like, you know. Oh. Don't tell your dad. <gasps> because it was someone she knew really well. He was staying with us. 